Welcome to P5 version 5.4, new features and workflows. This is the overview of the topics we're going to cover today. We'll talk about new features, UI improvements, and new platforms that are supported with P5. The first new feature is previews and proxies. The settings for transcoding with FFmpeg and ImageMagick respectively are now part of the P5 interface. This is the way it looks in the interface. You can set the settings for the size and bitrate of video and audio respectively. And this generates an MP4 file that will be part of the archive index or catalog. This is the way it looks for image magic that transcodes still images. You can set the size of the preview image that you actually see in the catalog. Those are the download links for FFmpeg and ImageMagick and their specialized macOS installers available as well. Also recently introduced to us that you can mail an archive link. If you're in the archive index and you have a single asset in front of you, if you double click it, you get the single asset window including the metadata, and on the bottom of the window, you see the email info. And this generates an email, including the link to this specific asset. The benefits here are clear. You can generate new collaborative workflows. You can use them for reference and research. A group of people can work on bigger projects to restore and search for a number of assets and to coordinate that. Next new feature is Verify Options. Verify Options have changed insofar as you have in the archive plan now the choice to either calculate a checksum or compare the complete content of a file. Be aware though that comparing the content is really time consuming but might be necessary due to specific policies or compliances. In the storage pool setting, you have the correspondence setting for the checksum type, MD5 and the SHA family in this case. In case you didn't have a look at MD5 and SHA family, here it is in, in a nutshell. Both are cryptographic hash functions and serve in our case to check for data integrity. The input is actually the file that's going to be tested and the output is a fixed size output depending on the function in use. 128 bits for MD5, 256 bits for SHA256. In theory, there should be a unique output for each file that you check. UI improvements. The file picker has recently been improved so that the selection of individual volumes has become easier. If you go to manual archiving, you see that all the mounted volumes and the user directory are listed. Same goes with the file picker in P5. Also kind of an interface improvement is the P5 archive app that makes archiving a lot easier because it support archiving without actually using the traditional P5 interface. As an add-on to P5 Archive that has to be running in the background, it's exclusive to macOS right now. It offers a Finder integration and additionally Final Cut Pro 10 integration. Let's have a closer look. If you're in the Finder and do a right-click or Command-click, on an individual file or a folder, you're presented with this additional context menu entries, Restore from P5 or Archive to P5. If you do that with a single file, the result is a P5A file after the archive job has completed. This P5A file links back to the archive index or catalog 
and is tiny in size, just 64 bytes. You can regroup them, rearrange them and put them in any order that makes sense to your specific workflow. The Final Cut Pro 10 integration looks like that. This is the part of the interface of Final Cut Pro. And in the upper right hand corner, there's this symbol here for share destinations. And the P5 Archive app is listed under share destinations if it is configured. That means you can archive a complete library, including externally linked assets and including, starting with the version 10.3 of Final Cut motion templates in one step um, to a P5 archive that has been set up before. The benefits are clear here. It is a lot easier to manage local storage. Traditionally, a workstation that does media creation or video editing has local direct attached storage, which fills up always faster than you, than you can plan for. And you can now, after completion of specific assets or projects, trigger an archive from the workstation, from the finder or within Final Cut remove the assets or migrate them to the archive and continue working because you reclaimed the free space. You can save investment for a storage expansion and you have improved insight over the files because you have a reduced number of files actually residing on the storage. And you have can archive without needing an admin. Though an admin can set up specific archive policies, tape cloning, um, multiple archives and archive jobs in the background, but the user who triggers the actual archive job doesn't have to be affected by that. More interface improvements. If you have a very long list of volumes or uh, tapes in use, like this one here, could be several hundred volumes, and it can be hard to keep track of um, what you want to decide on. Views and sorting can come in handy here. So if you're in this volumes view, you can actually sort and drag each individual column. You can create a new view for a specific purpose. This can use a filter like here, LTO6, only displays LTO6 volumes. And you can have, as a result, multiple views to keep things separate. You can separate disk and tape that way. You can separate backup and archive. You can keep separate several archives, storage pools, and so on. Now the next part is new platforms that are supported by P5. First, there's a storage platform that's new to P5. That's archived to the cloud. And P5 Archive now supports Amazon S3 storage as archive storage. It's a seamless integration is completely transparent to the user. And this allows for the first time to archive without any hardware investment. So you could from your desktop, laptop machine, start archiving to Amazon storage immediately and manage your local storage this way. For people that have a local archive, they can use this as a maximum security step using Amazon S3 as their off-site storage without being involved in any logistics. So this is the way it's being configured. If you go to archive and see the cloud storage that in turn lists the cloud storage resources and that can be configured with this interface. Next up is the Synology integration. So this is a new platform. It's very exciting for us because Synology is such a popular NAS vendor. It's known all over the world and selling a lot of NAS storage, being very popular in that field. And Arcura P5 can now be installed on a Synology NAS system. 
The solutions that are made possible by this are NAS backup, NAS cloning, NAS integrated in the company IT. For the first time, the NAS can easily be integrated in a professional company IT, whereas before it was kind of an outsider status that NAS systems had because they were hard to integrate. Now they can be served by the same tools that the whole company is served by. And the migration to disk and tape, of course. There are two main scenarios that you can work with. One is you can install P5 and run it as a client on a Synology NAS. In this case, it's a DS1515 Plus NAS that connects to a P5 server. The P5 server can run any of those, P5 Backup, P5 Archive, P5 Synchronize, and P5 Backup to go, and use any target storage, disk tape, and cloud, like for P5 Archive, as just mentioned. So this is one scenario where a P5 client is used on the Synology NAS. The second scenario is you have a P5 server running on the Synology NAS that could also run P5 Backup, P5 Archive, P5 Synchronize, and P5 Backup to go. This in turn uses disk and cloud storage, since there's no tape option right now available from Synology. And additionally, as a benefit, clients can be saved by this P5 server. All x86 or Intel models are supported, 64 bits. Um, but we like to ask you to balance your requirements and the hardware that's going to be used. Because of course, a NAS box is still kind of a mini PC. So it's um, by no way a replacement for a, a high professional, high power rack mounted server. But it's still a very flexible and easy to use tool for a lot of tasks. We can recommend for the client scenario use at least two gigabytes of RAM and for the server scenario at least four gigabytes of RAM. The Synology integration package can be found here in the download section. There's a new entry. Next up are snapshot supporting file systems. Those are ZFS and BetterFS, and they are automatically detected uh, by P5 Synchronize and P5 Backup to Go, and their snapshots being used, of course, depending on the configuration. There's a lot of benefits for data protection, deduplication, speed, other features that ZFS and BetterFS deliver. If you haven't had a look, have a look at ZFS features and BetterFS features because it's a host of benefits that come with them. There are also specific Synology NAS devices that support BetterFS, and so you can profit from both the integration with the Synology NAS and using BetterFS as one of the most modern file systems. So that was it. Thank you for listening and download P5 today.